I don't have any food. I'll admit it. I will brag. Those players did not just go and whip that ass for us to be like, this is not a good game. No, we whipped your ass. We took $800,000 and now we're gonna party with you. Yeah, who cares if you're in the Power 5 Conference if you don't win it, ever? If you don't beat any of the teams in it? Like, what's the point of that? Wouldn't you rather win the conference and say, like, hey, my team is good, than lose the conference and say, well, our conference is good? Well, I'll tell you what, I got two teams that's got me gassed up. It's going to be a hell of a battle. It'd be like two dogs fighting over a milk bar. Look, they don't call me tip for nothing. And my tip is, look out for the group of five this season. They've been taking it to the Power Five year after year. The only quarterbacks that ever get any love are from the Power Five. I could easily list off the top group of five quarterbacks I would rather have than those guys. I would be willing to bet that at least one of them is going to be in the running for the Heisman. Hey, Jeff. Good evening, everybody. Group of five guys coming at you for our 4th of July special. We're going to talk all kind of good stuff tonight. We got offensive fireworks coming out of all the group of five conferences. We're going to talk a little bit about our best favorite tailgate food and drink. We had a big Twitter debate about playoff expansion, so we are going to expand on that a little bit tonight. I'm going to give a quick review of my trip down to Florida International, meeting with Coach Mack down there in Miami. It's, it's a big show. We are missing Zeke Anderson, though. So, you know, he's just not here. Nothing's wrong with him, anything like that. But before we go any further, y'all make sure you hit like and subscribe if you're on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, at Group of Five Guys. If you're looking for a Group of Five Guys hat, T-shirt, koozie, mask, go to groupoffiveguys.com. And we do get a small cut of that so it can help us to travel to more games. And then, of course, make sure... Y'all call the hotline, 615-900-4286. We want to hear your hottest takes, predictions, picks, talk trash, whatever you want to do. Going around the horn, Keto Guido, Jesse Grisham, how are you, sir? I'm fantastic. It's like I'm in a very, very good mood because the world around us is – feels like it's just crumbling apart. Everybody's just fighting with each other. But can we not look at the bright side? We're about a month, month and a half away for some football. Like, we're so close to getting this country back to being in the stands and arguing with each other about stuff that matters. Like, what rival team is the best? You know, we're, we're starting to come together, man. Tailgating, partying, drinking, and watching guys score TDs, baby, tutties. I'm, I'm in a great mood, man. I had a great trip in uh, New Jersey. Um, coming from, I, That's where I belong. I was there for seven days at LBI – Went to the Jersey Shore, walked on the boardwalk, had a couple slices of some freaking tomato pie, had a had, had a blast, man. Had a blast. Drank my White Claws on the beach. White Claws, Miller Lite, same thing, man. They both do the same thing. They make me a better person. I had a great time. I had a blast. And then, not only that, in my good mood, just because I've come off a vacation and football's close, my wife surprises me today. We're going to go see the Backstreet Boys tomorrow night. So, I mean, what else could – what can make today better? Tell me, Sprouse. I'm going to go see Backstreet Boys, everybody. Yeah. I am fired up. Fired up. Tipton, Dude. you're at the beach, and I'm happier than you are. <laughs> Dude, yeah. That reminds me. So, me and Jesse and Michaela, Jesse's wife, Lauren, my wife, went to see a Post Malone concert like two years ago in Atlanta. And I remember – uh, so it was um, Ray Schremmerd did the opening for for Post Malone, and they brought out they brought out Gucci Mane, and, <laughs> and he goes through like his whole verse, and Jesse's like, "Sprouse, is that Gucci Mane? Is that Gucci Mane?" <laughs> and I was like, "Yes." He's like, "Gucci Mane's on this song," and I was like, "Yes." <laughs> he's like, that guy right there is Gucci Mane. I was like, "Yes." I love it. I, this is the best concert I've ever been to. I just like, we're all there watching Post Malone, and then out of nowhere, some huge dude comes out. Everybody's just losing their minds. I'm like, who is that guy? And all, all Sprouts had to say was Gucci. I was like, oh, I get it now. Uh, that's pretty cool, man. But three weeks ago was our last podcast, and you said you were going to get a picture of a true Guido mm -hmm. on the Jersey Shore drinking a, a White Claw, and mm. I didn't see it. I haven't seen it. I couldn't. Okay, I couldn't get the picture in mm -hmm. time, uh, but 
I went to several breweries. Take it or leave it. Change the station if you want. Get me on mute. Several, several breweries I went to. Everybody was drinking these these home brewed uh, seltzers. Seltzers that will put you on your ass. Um, but yeah, I mean, the Jersey Shore. These guys are all washboard abs, spiked hair. They ain't drinking hard beer, Sprouts. These guys are drinking water, vodka, and seltzers. That's it. And I was mm-hmm. one of them. And I and I, that's why I drank the the seltzers because I'd had to keep sure I make like. I had my shirt off. I had to make sure my abs yeah. were defined. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, anyway, speaking of beach tip, you are on a balcony right now. That's dedication coming on here tonight. You're on your vacation. Welcome. Thank you. Great to see you, boys. Yeah, I'm I'm in uh, Panama City Beach with the family. Uh, been here two days now, and the weather's been fantastic both days. So, uh, yeah, everything's been great here so far. And uh, just got to clear this up with you, Jesse. <laughs> White Claws and Miller Lite are not the same thing. <laughs> nope. Sure aren't. After about 10 apiece. <laughs> it's all the same at that point. They're all the same. <laughs> I'm oh, just saying. Man. Well, I mean, uh, tip, 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 tip. We've been going through this about three podcasts in a row. I still love my Miller Lite. I will shot. I'll tell you this. I can't shotgun them seltzers. I, I, like, I like sipping them. There's sort of that fruity taste. Just... Just, oh, just does something to me. I, Lights, I understand. I but understand. The, but the Miller Lights are still my palate. They're my palate. A White Claw is like my palate cleanser. I just like to clean my palate a lot. Mm-hmm. All, all I'm saying is you couldn't you couldn't take a picture of anyone up there drinking White Claws on the beach because you were the only one. Just say mm-hmm. it. I was cross-eyed for about five days or seven when I was up there. I didn't have time. I didn't think about taking pictures of people. I, actually, I was on the, on the flight back, and I like look at Michaela, go through my phone, and I said, I forgot to get pictures of people drinking seltzer. She's she's like, what? I said, forget it. <laughs> yeah, y'all remember? Y'all remember? I know me and Jesse watched Jersey Shore religiously in college. Do y'all remember when they would go out and it never failed? Every time they went out, they'd get drunk and like some local would try to fight them. Like I just pictured Jesse, all the locals being like, God, this guy. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh man. I have so much I could talk about the Jersey Shore. I'll just <laughs> I'll be rambling right now. But I went to the Jersey Shore house and it it was top moments of my life because that show meant so much to me. It sounds sad, but I was in college. Me and Sprouse would watch that every Thursday night before going out to the mm-hmm. bars and stuff. And just going into that house and just being there, seeing the bed that Ron destroyed when he was domestically abusing his girlfriend. It was just, it was just, it was cool to see. It was really cool to see. <laughs> anyway, last but not least, Jeff Murphy coming off a fresh NBA Finals victory. Congratulations. How are you, sir? Man, I, I couldn't be better, Sprouse. I mean, just. Every once in a while, the planets and the stars, they just they all align, and things just go exactly how you need it to. And my dubs pulled it out, man. We won the championship. I mean, we're by far the best team all year. Shout out to my boy Stephen A. Smith on first take. He called it midseason. So, uh, nah, won a little money, won about seven, 800 bucks almost, and helped, uh, helped to buy some gear for the uh, upcoming trips we're taking on. So definitely fired up about that. And I'll say this, Grish. I think now, since you've been to the Jersey Shore House, you have a lot of stories. I think it'd be great. You just do your White Claw Wednesday that you're starting up now since you've ditched Miller point. Monday and just tell us all about the Jersey Shore. White White Claw Wednesday. I think that's got a great ring to it. And, uh, you like know, I, since you're not a Miller guy anymore, I think that's that's the yeah. route you need love to it. take. Yeah. I know what you're doing yep. here. I know what you're doing. <laughs> and I don't care. I love it. I love White Claw Wednesdays. Hell, I do Blue Mondays and White Claw Wednesdays. Okay, let's not set the bar too yeah, high for you. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we don't want to put too too much too much on you because you got to pick. You can't be a Miller Light guy you can and do Tequila a White Tuesdays, Claw. Freaky Fridays, you know, kind of weird stuff. <laughs> I, I, I love the White Claws Wednesdays, and it, you know what? Maybe this Wednesday I'll do that. This Wednesday I will give you my breakdown of what the Jersey Shore House was all about because. It was, it, was, it was amazing. It was amazing. I'm, again, I'll stop talking about it. But, hey, if, if you're listening and you want to mail us in a question for the rest of the season about the Jersey Shore, I'll give you an answer. 
and that is mail in. We'll get you that P.O. box here pretty soon. <laughs> I know Zeke's against the snail mail, but we still do take handwritten letters here on the Group of Five I Guys love podcast. a good handwritten letter. Mr. Cajun sent a handwritten letter with uh, some gumbo, some hot sauce. <sighs> Big time. Yeah. Nice handwritten letter, and, and, I, and I, I mean, I don't know. I appreciate it more. Just thoughtful. Know, very thoughtful. So well, you got to come. You got, they're at my house, so you all got to come down. We'll have some gumbo. We you know how to cook gumbo since you're from your trip? Do you remember how to make it? No. Yeah. Well, what I do know is, yeah, actually, the, the best gumbo I had was the guy that used the roux from his deep-fried Thanksgiving turkey from the week before. <laughs> that was the best gumbo that I had. So Can I say, it's still one of my favorite episodes of all the podcasts is Sprouse describing the gumbo from Louisiana. Yeah, and, you just, and, and you just, like, trying to cut me off and put me on blast like everybody in the world <laughs> has been to lafayette louisiana and had boudin and andy boudin. Gator. you never had boudin balls boudin you never had boudin <laughs> andy gator you've never drank andy gator well i mean andy yeah, dude, i have local grocery but, store right now probably either way but yeah in the south all right here we go uh so, <laughs> so anyway uh so i went down to fiu i went i went home to south florida to see my my family there and uh took a little day trip down to miami Went and met with Coach McIntyre at FIU. So shout out to him. It was Father's Day and a Sunday. A he meets time. me up at the facility to give me a tour. Got in his truck. We drove around campus. Dude, so so FIU, I mean, we all went down there to play, but you don't really get to see the campus. And I remember seeing it when I was in high school doing, like, camps and seven-on-seven seven stuff. But their campus is sweet, man. It's super nice. I mean, of course, there's palm trees everywhere. Really cool architecture. Um, so they got – and it's a young school. I think it's. I think he told me it was like only fifty years old. The school, so um, really good business and marketing school. Uh, really good medical school. So they're going to have some big money donors coming up. Just got to win some games, and I think they'll get some more support there. Unpopular opinion, because I I know a lot of people don't think this way, but I I kind of like their stadium when we would go there and play. I, I, I like the structure of it when we go out there and you're on the field. I, I know it's all metal bleachers, but the way it's it's laid out, I liked it. And not hating on FIU, but in the years that we played, they didn't exactly have as many people in the stands. But I guess the metal bleachers somehow uh, elaborated more sound, yeah. and it, it it got it got pretty loud there when it needed to be. I, I never really uh, hated on the stadium so much, but I'm curious to hear. What, what were their practice facilities like? Did you get to see those? Is it kind of like an MTSU? Is it just like a two grass field? Uh, what two, we got there? Two, uh, two grass and then a turf. So they've got three oh, cool. fields. No indoor, um, but the turf's the same as the stadium turf. So the, so they don't uh, – he they, they hardly ever practice in the stadium unless it's like a Thursday or Friday walkthrough type of deal. Mm. Um, but, you know, it's Florida, so grass is green, man. Yeah. It's You know, it's it, it looks good. I, I couldn't tell you what it looks like after camp's over with, but it looks yeah. good. Um, the pictures you sent, they look, the weight room's pretty big. Yeah, weight room's huge. Um, and that's my bad. They, you know, it's off season, so they were doing a couple like small renovations. So I forgot to crop a cone out of the picture. <laughs> so my fault, coach, I told you I was going to do that. I did not. Uh, but yeah, weight room is huge. I mean, it's it's probably due for a renovation. It's it's looks like it's about the time frame of like the last renovations like they kind of skipped a if that makes sense i'm sure it makes sense to y'all but for the listeners it, it's probably five years old um but yeah it's it's big i mean you probably get the whole team in there um their football everything's connected there which is good so you know if we compare it to middle tennessee where you kind of got to walk across this parking lot to go to the weight room it's all in the same building locker room nice. weight room Football stadium, well, all that. And dumb question here: you, You're talking about the campus being nice. Is the stadium like on campus? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's on campus, dude. So, so the coolest thing about it, and I will, I will, if there's one selling point about FIU, they are building a new dorm, and it's in the same parking lot as the stadium, and it's a freaking looks like a typical like Miami Beach luxury condo. And wow. it is sick. I mean, it, it's it's legit. It looks like probably where Tip's at. Right Tip's now. there right now. Yeah. Tip, how's, the <laughs> yeah, how's the visit? FIU, huh? Uh, but so he said some of the older players will get the chance to live there. Um, if you're in, like, some of the top floors, you'd be able to see, you know, the stadium from there, which would be pretty cool. I think, you know, you could 
just tailgate in the, in the dorm or condo or whatever you want to call it. Um, but it's really cool. Um, and like you said on the stadium, yeah, I, I kind of remember that too. And I like the idea of a smaller stadium and there's, it's only, it's only 20 something thousand, but look, let's, let's be realistic here. If you're only going to put 12 to 15,000, why do you want a 40 or 50,000 seat stadium that you got to put tarps all over the place? You know, when you can, when you can, you put 15,000 in a 20,000 seat stadium, it looks pretty full. Yeah. And, and another, another huge selling point for them, Sprouse, similar to FAU, there is a lot of talent. Like there's a lot of talent out there at FAU, a lot of talent at FIU. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, there's a lot of talent, a lot, a lot of, well, you, you ran into some talent while you were down there. You ran into our boy uh, Tyrese Chambers, didn't you? How, how's that getting, getting to meet him? Hey, well, so two things. I know what Jesse was talking about. Um, I mean, you know, that's my, there's my neck of the woods there. So I will vouch for that for sure. I think everybody's been down there. But uh, yeah, dude, Tyrese. So, so that was cool too. I mean, there was probably, so I met Coach at, I think we were supposed to meet at like 9 a.m. I met him about quarter to nine outside the facility there was probably already 10 to 12 guys optional on us again on a sunday on the field throwing throwing and catching their tight ends an all-conference guy tyrese and uh one a couple of the other receivers were there um so really cool and yeah i mean tyrese is like he's you know i'm tall he's a little shorter than me but he's pretty solid man he's not just some little speed guy he's he's pretty solid pretty built guy um but again to have those guys you know, I know, I know coach wasn't, you know, allowed to go out there and watch. So we couldn't, we couldn't really go out there and watch. Um, but, you know, you saw the guys walking in and uh, you probably had 10 or 12 guys there optionally throwing. Um, but so on a Sunday, back, on a Sunday, on Father's Day. That's, at, that's at wild, man. Yeah, man. That, that makes that, me want to look out for FIU this year. Well, and it's, it's kind of what, you know, Tyrese was talking to us about that culture being built. And and you can tell, dude. Coach Mack is super fired up. I mean, just his he, he's got his family bought into the city. He's he's you know he's he's so proud of pointing everything out. He's, we're pointing at it, looking at a blank wall, and he's like, "This is gonna be you know this this and this." And he he's fired up getting some of those you know adjustments made. And uh, you know, I want to go back to you brought up talent to a degree um, and recruiting. So I asked him about that because I, I got to thinking. You know, FAU and FIU, they always got dudes, always. And I got to thinking, you know, if you're from there, what's really the what's really the selling point? You know, the beach, the palm trees, whatever, like you, you grew up with it. It's not that big a deal. Then what he said was a really good point was like, what we get is the guys that want to come back. That So with this all this transfer portal stuff, it, he's like, it's helping them so much because – you get these guys that go up north, they think they're getting the big power five, so they go to Syracuse or Rutgers or Indiana, and they go up there and they hate it. And then they want to come back home or come back, you know, to Florida. And so that's the guys that they're starting to get. And, I mean, those are, you know, it, we all, everybody always talks about that from every school in Florida. You recruit the Florida kids, especially the Broward, Dade, Palm Beach County kids. I mean, you're going to have you're gonna have talent on the roster, so – they're starting to do that, you know, and if they can come together, the way Conference USA is just so up in the air. I mean, you never know, man. Yeah, it's up I was going to say, Jeff is – I mean, Zeke's out here, but I know Jeff's a big betting man, and I'll throw some money out there as well. That might be a team that you might want to put the over on on their win, win, or, lose, win or loss – win yeah. and losses. Because looking at their schedule, I, no offense to Conference USA, but they are set up to have a better season – than years past, in my opinion, looking at FIU. They don't really have any out-of-conference, you know, mm -hmm. automatic L's to say, you know, quote-unquote. But I, I can see them winning at least six ball games this year, maybe seven. So, just well, you know, FIU. well, and you know they're going to put that win total at like two and a half probably. That's what I'm thinking, too. They're playing, the, well, I don't know, two and a half, maybe like three or four, and I think it's be more than that, I, yeah. personally. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see when the when all the lines come out and – when they start doing that for some of the smaller conferences, because there might be some money to be made for sure. Some sleeper teams. Yeah. Yeah. No question about that. But again, man, shout out coach Mack. I mean, we, we got some t-shirts, gave my, gave my wife a t-shirt too. Big time, um, I mean, man. He, just, just really good stuff going on there. And any, any time you can just feel the energy from a guy, you know, just walking in the building, 
it's a good sign. I mean, that's a good sign of the culture that's being built. And then again, the, the guys in there throwing and catching, running routes. They had the ladder and some cones out there. I mean, that's especially when it's your, you know, Tyrese is probably their best player, especially when he's out there. I mean, they got a chance, man. So that's that's really, I mean, that's really the. <laughs> Jesse's pointing at his heart. If you're listening, not watching, that's a inside inside joke between all of us. They have heart. You if you always... come in on Sunday on Father's Day, I'm sorry, I didn't do that one time in my five years playing college football. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you come in on Sunday, these guys yeah. are obviously wanting something. They want some W's. So put your money on FIU to win at least one or two games. They're not supposed to. Is is, yeah. is, is a smart bet in my opinion. And, and I'll, I'll give one more selling point because I, I I'm interested in this. So they their business building is like. The, the Bacardi business and marketing school. No, no way. So, so how tight is that? I mean, you got, you got such an, in. if you want to go into hospitality down there, you want to, you know, I'm sure everybody wants to own a nightclub, but you're getting, you're probably getting guest speakers from the guys that own live and story and 11 and some other, you know, really good nightlife down that way. So Big time. I'm telling you, if you, if you're thinking about after ball, you want to be in a good spot. Florida International University, 54,000 students too. So hmm. you get some of these medical school and business school grads and you start winning some ball games. Um, you're, you know, you start getting some donor money in there. I think we're losing Jesse Grisham there. So I hope everything's okay. Um, you know, side note on that too, while we wait on Jesse, do you know that when they beat Miami in 2019 at the Marlins Stadium, y'all remember that? FIU beat Miami. Yeah. You know that they have not won an FBS game since then? Really? So, I did not know that. So you think about a team like FIU, you beat the local Power 5 school, not even just like yeah. any Power 5. You beat the local Power 5 that should be a program changer and a program builder, and they just haven't been able to put it all together since then. So there was a lot of stuff going on. Um you know, with Butch Davis and some politics. I think, but, but I think Coach that. Max got it in order. You all right, Jess? I had to go lay the smack down a little bit. Somebody decided to vacuum the house during a podcast. <laughs> so It's all good. We're, okay. we got- We're having fun. We're having fun. <laughs> Everybody's having fun. Well, watch this transition. Sounds like there's fireworks in the Grisham household. Speaking of fireworks... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, was, I just came here like, mm-hmm. I looked downstairs. I said, I said, I said, good time to vacuum. She goes, oh my God, can you hear me? <laughs> I was like, I'm pretty sure we can. Yeah. She's like, oh my God, I'll stop. I'm sorry. That's hilarious. Um, yeah, no. So, Fourth of July weekend coming up. You know, it's a, it's a, it's always a fun. Any of the summer holidays are fun, but Fourth of July, you know, shout out to Jason Cons, Nick good DiGiulio. Time. All those guys we've had on the podcast, you know, football related, Air Force, Army, Navy. Appreciate you guys. I know all of us have at least some friends and family that have served. So thank you. Um, but Fourth of July weekend, Jesse's claiming he's got the best barbecue in the South. What do you do? Man, I'm just saying, Fourth of July, I, I'm a softie. I do love Christmas. Christmas is probably my favorite time of year. I, I really do enjoy Christmas. But when it comes to Fourth of July, I, it, it is just memorable to me. I love 4th of July. I love the sun. I love the pool. I love being wet and just drinking and having a good time and sweating and cooking good meats. This this weekend, what we're doing is, for the first time, I really don't have a lot of plans. Uh, we're we're going to have just me and Michaela and probably a few neighbors. We're going to smoke some ribs um, on uh, Monday and be at the pool. I got a neighborhood pool, so I got a Traeger, so I just keep up with the temperature while I'm at the pool, drinking my White Claws or Miller Lights, tipping. And we're gonna we're gonna smoke some ribs. We're gonna have about three racks. We're gonna do some mac, uh, homemade mac and cheese and some uh, corn on the cob, and maybe a, a broccoli or two. I don't know, probably not. Honestly, probably gonna be all carbs. And it's broccoli. Gonna be great. Here's oh, a guy that makes some potato salad, and he wants to have salad. Unbelievable. <laughs> No, I, I shouldn't have said that part. It's really going to be mac and cheese and, and probably corn on the cob. Yeah, go. And then it's going to be just a nice two to three racks of ribs, baby. Not baby back. We're going, like we're going to do the uh, uh, spare ribs. St. Louis spare ribs. So There you go. 
Yeah, looking forward to it, man. I really do enjoy Fourth of July. I love it. And the tradition is every morning while I'm eating breakfast, I love watching guys just throw semi hot dogs in their mouth, dipping it in water. <laughs> What's that guy's I, name? I, Kobayashi? Is he still around? No. Joey Chestnut. Did he, no, Chestnut. Joey, Joey Chestnut. Did, yeah. Joey Chestnut did he die? Did he die? Did he die? A Zeke Anderson, like a, I don't know. I feel like I feel like that's like a Zeke guy. He he he's like Zeke times three, <laughs> built wise. Not built wise. Well, he's like well, you know Zeke's pretty petite. I think Zeke would take that as an insult. I think he would too. Joey Chestnut's pretty big, man. I mean, well, yeah, times. twice. He's not that twice. big. Hold he's, on, I'm gonna look up the stats here. Y'all Joey Chestnut's talking. about as sloppy looking as they come. Sloppy. First Joey, of all, Joey's anybody built. that eats 75 hot dogs and you obviously don't understand the sport. Yeah. You don't understand the sport. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Joey Joey Chestnut is six sport. foot six foot tall and 230 pounds. Ripped. No, he's <laughs> definitely not. not ripped. Do me a favor here on this podcast. Can you please put a picture of Joey Chestnut right now? Yeah, I got the perfect uh, picture because he is not yeah. ripped. Go ahead at and all. save the PDF and then put it on here. Joey Chestnut. I know, I guarantee eight percent of our listeners know Joey Chestnut are Joey Chestnut is, and they're probably patting me on the back right now. Joey Chestnut's a man, a beast, and a, and a force to be reckoned with, and he represents America well. And he the beat guy, China the guy, their sport. The guy he could be a worse America athlete. He's he's, yeah. he's 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 popular for shoving wieners down his throat. Like <laughs> those guys condition their bodies to put this their body oh, through more oh hell than we ever thought about. Now you're going to tell me people play pickleball are real athletes too. <laughs> Oh, don't you dare. <laughs> pickleball, it goes in order of pickleball. Yeah, yeah. What's, what's harder on your body? Hot dog eating contest than Probably pickleball. Probably hot dog eating contest. You throw 70 hot dogs in your gullet, Jeff, and see how you feel. Those guys train all year for this. And and it's celebrated each 4th of July at, at what, 11 o'clock Eastern? And it's, it's just, it's, 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 uh, it's wonderful to watch. Our boy Ty Watson last year actually went to it live. You got to watch it live at Coney Island. Hmm. I agree with Christian oh, on this one. I do. Oh, like they, what? Like, wow. I do. Thank you, they, they they purposely like Where's stretch my... their they they purposely like right before they stretch their stomach out to get to get their stomach ready to eat that many hot dogs. Like it. I mean, they put their body through a lot. They don't that, wake up and say, day. Mm, "I'm craving seventy hot dogs today." Not, well, These guys stretch their stomachs by eating lettuce for like three months. Well, hold their on. Their stomachs like that long. Hold on just a second. Joey Chestnut stretches his stomach and Kobayashi does, but look at the guys that finish third, fourth. Those guys <laughs> don't wake finish up third, third and fourth, fifth place. Sprouts, those, those guys, guys come wake last. up last. You're talking about the guys that are 400 pounds. They don't even place in the like top five. I'm oh, telling how you. many guys they got up there? Oh, there's about 20 guys up there. What yeah. an embarrassment we I are. Mean, really, I mean, really. We it's celebrate sad. Fear, freedom by watching a freaking 55 year old man guzzle a bunch of processed hot dogs made of nothing. <laughs> And there oh. is the in, in Sprouts, there's like twenty thousand people out there just getting hit with hot dog debris and water, and they're loving it. Why are they getting hit? They're oh, these guys it. are just shoveling shit in their mouth, and just debris going everywhere. And the women are all about it. They got groupies, dude. Like it's, it's amazing. I bet they do. They do. No, no way. You're telling me. Joey Chestnut pulls some snatch after eating seventy <laughs> hot dogs, dude. It ain't happening, brother. No way. He may he may drop a turd that's fifteen uh, curics, but he is getting whatever he wants after that because he is getting sponsored. He's sponsored by like five or six huge huge advertisers. Yeah, like this guy's like made dog. a million dollars a year eating in food competitions. Hate him all you want, boys. He's doing better than we are. <laughs> he is. Yeah. He's making a living. Just eating hot dogs, and he's won. Tipton helped me out. Maybe you know. I think he's won thirteen hot dog competitions. It used to be all about Kobayashi, not anymore. I cannot believe we just spent about so, eight minutes. Yeah, you know serious. how? Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, I got to ch- I got to change for my thoughts on old Joey Jaws. Graduate, he's a of, beast. Graduate of San Jose State University. <laughs> oh, oh, and you remember he went to Coastal last year, and and uh, that was yeah, like the locker room celebration. He, he ate. He had a like a pie eating contest with them guys. Now, pie is a whole nother deal. That's a oh, whole you other, respect that's a whole the pie? Other. Oh, I respect pie years. He only, you know, he only gets twenty thousand dollars for winning that. 
That's the well, first. Well, but, but his sponsors probably yeah. pay him more than that. Yeah, Nathan Nathan's Hot Dogs probably pays him a pretty Yeah, because, I mean. People are tuning in on ESPN to see if Joey Chestnut wins that year. Look, I'm going to be honest with you. Kobayashi. He been, has whipped Kobayashi for like 13 years in a row. I'm going to be honest. I've been on this earth for 32 years now. I've never once sat down on the 4th of July and watched any of those people eat hot dogs. No. You should. Seriously? Just. just no. Why not? Sure. You just don't care. You don't think. No, about I'm it. usually doing like it? actual productive things with my time, getting ready for, yeah. you know, the fireworks show or. Get oh, my, if you're getting ready for a fireworks get, show, get, ten o'clock in the morning. Oh, we then... pre- oh, you, we, 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 are you going to have ready. a bunch of fireworks out there on the on the? Oh, there's on the no farm doubt. there. Oh, we oh I bunch. guess that makes sense. So you, y'all have a fireworks show at your farm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At uh, uh okay. at my in laws, dude. They got all that open space. We set I set everything up. It's strategic. And I got this perfect playlist. It starts off with. With Ray Charles, the song from uh, the Sandlot, so that's blasting. Now, as the fireworks are going off, and I got. Can my, I ask uh, a personal yeah. question? Yeah, what's up? I mean, I don't, like how much? How personal do you spend? though? Well, I just want to know how much do you spend on fireworks on Fourth of July? So like, we do all you think total family does like five hundred bucks? No, a couple, oh, probably you, a couple thousand. We all, that. yeah, we put. What you used to say? A couple. I mean, all together when you add everybody, a couple like, grand. Yeah, there's like four or five oh, families. Five hundred bucks gets you like two mortars oh, yeah. Yeah. look i got a guy too so we get some we get some $2, of the illegal stuff from, from mexico yeah it's good too the oh. kids love it man the kids love it all the kids from the neighborhoods yeah. there's a neighborhood behind they come back around it's a big it's a big production the reason man. the guy right after, the top left is not having kids two thousand dollars right up money. right after much. we just ate a succulent brisket that i smoked for about mm. 16 hours a real piece of meat that, mm. that you smoke mm-hmm. on the 4th of July brisket. None of that mm-hmm. rib stuff. T- yeah, Tip, are yeah. you going to be at the beach for the 4th? Are you still going to be there? No, no, we'll, we'll be back home. But we're doing something similar. We're we're getting some fireworks, and we're going to have uh, some family over and shoot off some fireworks in the backyard. I like you it. Yeah, I'll be so, up in the uh, Florence Muscle Shoals area. They do a big fireworks show. Hey, now. The land, the, the the Lanning family royalties down that way. And yeah, about Rick's barbecue, but uh, yeah, they do some fireworks over the lake there. My my in laws live right on the water right there. Yeah, so that's awesome. Cool. We're, we're, I'm gonna we're golfing Saturday morning. We get a little tune up round before we go to San Marcos. There you, I don't have we. And I don't then, know uh, if we've we've told everybody yet. Have we not? Have we? I don't know. Well, and any guys, we're going to capacity? San Marcos, Texas, the weekend of July fifteenth. It is going to be incredible. You're looking for three idiots floating down the river on a Saturday morning. Here we are. And then we'll be, but, swinging, uh, we'll be swinging the bats at some point, too, on the golf course. Yeah, dude. Those and guys. I've got to get limbered up. I mean, I'm sore. I played yesterday, and I'm not. It was not. It did not go good. I mean, it was. I'm not good at golf, but it was the worst I've ever played. So I'm well, just that's that's why we have old Tyler Tipton. He's our ringer. Yeah, no problem. He's just got, to verify, everybody knows. So, yes, yeah, Sprouse, Jeff, and Tyler Tipton will be going to Texas State. They chose the weekend of my wife's birthday to go to Texas State. We chose. I will be in Nashville with Zeke Anderson. So, we will be visiting Broadway. So, um, I hope the guys have a great, safe trip. I hope they enjoy the offensive line, even though I am an offensive lineman. I hope they get to experience the offensive line and have a good time floating on the river drinking white balls or whatever. We will not be. Uh, I sure as hell hope those guys. The Kyle's from Canada. That guy, there's no chance he drinks seltzers. Yeah, he's got to drink like <laughs> sour goat's milk or something like that, right? Something, something real yeah. stout. It's gonna look yeah. like Coca Cola in there. It's gonna be just straight dark beer. Yeah. yeah. Um. But, well, but Sprouse, anyway. will you please clarify? We did not purposely pick. No. No. Let me tell weekend, everybody what happened, way. and we and I've got the receipts. So if we need to put them on, we'll share them. We interviewed kyle hergel on our podcast and we just got just chopping it up talking about golf we didn't even have a set date and we said hey fellas great interview with kyle we got to plan a trip out to texas state to go golf with those guys jesse grisham i will not be able to make a trip to texas this summer i have too much going on. zeke anderson yeah texas is going to be a lot for me okay hey no problem so we go ahead and book the trip. I cannot believe <laughs> you planned this around my wife's birthday. I mean, you could have picked. I mean, the we hit right there on the hammer, like 15th, her birthday. 
Take well, it or leave it. That's when we're going. Well, they had they had some stuff. No. I mean, they had stuff they got no, going on too. They're so busy. it's not they're busy. I it's get not it. just. I'm just jealous. I'm jealous. I want to go. I want to have fun. I want to be. Just. I want to get after it. I want to have a good time. That's okay. It's okay. I'll be in Nashville hey, with Zeke Anderson. We'll get after it. Have a good time. Well, hey, so so let's get let's get serious here for a second. So, little little segment here on fireworks. We're going to have some offenses putting up some big-time numbers or fireworks, if you will. You look at Western Kentucky, what they did last year with Zappi, Jarrett Stearns, got both of those guys into the league with that with that season. There's going to be somebody that we're not thinking about just yet that's going to have an incredible offensive showing in the year 2022. We're going to go around the horn here, pick one or two teams apiece who we think is going to be that team. If you're looking for maybe you're new to the group of five, you know, you don't know who you're going to watch. Well, these teams we bring up, Regardless of what their records are going to be, they are going to be exciting to watch because they're going to put up huge offensive numbers this year. So I'll start with you, Tyler Tipton. Who you got? I got a few teams, but I mean, let's let's be clear here. I I don't know if we're going to see another Western Kentucky yeah, type be... numbers this year. I mean, what Extremely they difficult. did in that one season was just it was incredible. Not like it was incredible to watch. It was incredible to see. And like it, I just this is this is an offense we're going to be talking about years down the line. Like you remember that Bailey Zappi led offense at Western Kentucky. I, I just don't know if we're going to see those type of stats and numbers in a in a one single season ever again. And if we do, it'll be a while. Um, but some teams that were had good offensive la- offenses last season that have a lot of returning players coming back. Um, one, one team in particular is coastal Carolina. So in 2021 season, they were fourth in D one with 495 total yards per game, fifth in all of D one with 41 points per game. So I mean, they were putting up a lot of points. Grayson McCall's coming back. They lost Isaiah likely. They lost their top running back, their top receiver, but I mean, it's, it's next man up, right? I mean, you got running back Braden Bennett, who last year had 74 rushes, 636 yards rushing, seven touchdown, 8.6 yards per carry. So, I mean, that's 74 rushes. That's a that's a big sample size to average 8.6 yards per carry. Um, he also can catch the ball out of the backfield. He had 24 catches, 295 yards receiving, and two touchdowns. I'm looking for him to have a big season, and I think Coastal Carolina is going to be right back up there and have and, and put up big numbers on offense again, put up – score a lot of points. Yeah, McC- um, McCall especially is getting a ton of I, – I hope he lives up to it because he's finally getting some of that hype, that preseason hype. And then if you look at all all these magazines and all the preseason stuff, I mean, he's, he's really the only group of five quarterback that's getting any love right now. So I, I hope – that he lives up to it, at least, you know, from a stat perspective. Yep. And then another, another team I have SMU last year. I mean, they were top 15 in total yards, points per game, passing yards. Uh, they, they scored 38 and a half points a game. Another team that's putting up a lot of points. Uh, Tanner Mordecai is coming back. He threw for over 3,600 yards and had 39 passing touchdowns last year. Uh, they lost three of their top four receivers and tight ends, but I, I expect wide receiver Rashi Rice to have a great 2022 season. Last year, he had 670 receiving yards and nine touchdowns. I can total, I can, I can see this guy getting double digit touchdowns this season. And then th- their top two running backs are back this year: Trey Siggers and uh, Ulysses Bentley the Fourth are back. And they combined for over 1,300 rushing yards and 13 touchdowns. Mm. So, again, they have they have a lot of players coming back this year. Top 15 in those three categories I mentioned in offense. That's going to be another team that's going to score a lot of points and put up put up big numbers. Um, another like team, it. the new Sun Belt team, Marshall. I think I oh, think yeah. they're going to be right back up there now. <laughs> These these rankings from last year are a bit deceiving because Grant Wells is no longer there. He transferred to Virginia Tech, but they were 16th in D1 in with 457 total yards, 
They were 18th in D1 with almost 300 passing yards. But again, Grant Wells, he transferred. But I'm going to be completely honest, I don't think it matters. Last year, they relied on uh, Rajin Ali and their running game. And, I mean, Grant Wells, I mean, he threw for a lot of yards last year, but he ha- he only had 16 passing touchdowns and 13 interceptions. I mean, Ali had yeah. 23 rushing touchdowns <laughs> and 1,400 yards last year. Wow. So, I mean, <laughs> dude, he is gonna, yeah, he's, he's going to have an incredible season. And then their top receiver, uh, Corey Gamage, he's back this season. So I'm, I'm going to be I'm going to be honest. I, I think I think they're they're going to be right there. The the offensive scheme's not changing. I think you're going to get another quarterback to come right in and fill that system. And like, might not throw for as many yards as Grant Wells did, but I mean, I don't I don't think throwing for more than 16 touchdown passes is out of the out of the question. No, and with no. the transfer portal, you just never know. Mm-hmm. You, I mean, you could just get somebody, you know. Well, you look out of, out of the blue, yeah. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, Zappy was point. an FCS guy. Yeah. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Yep. Well, and you, and you look at Marshall too, going into a new conference. You know, maybe the offense is a little new to some of the defenses, so maybe they give them some problems. And then you and then you look at because last year was Coach Huff's first year there, so he, of course he's a Saban guy. So, you know, he's going to start probably recruiting Marshall a little bit better, getting some of the processes in place. So it, it might be a type of deal where it doesn't matter who's playing quarterback or who's playing wherever. It's just next man up. And and if you got Ali coming back, I mean, they're they're gonna be they're gonna be a problem in the yeah. Sun Belt for sure. But uh Murph, I'll go to you. Yeah, I know you, you probably got some Mountain West teams in here. What do you got? Yeah, so I think if there was one team that could get as close to Western um as possible, it's gonna be Fresno State. Uh, they're my they're my top team coming out of the uh, Mountain West this year. Um, head coaching change for sure. Their head coach left for Washington, uh, but they're getting Jeff Tedford back. He to be a second stint at Fresno State. Coached at Cal for for I think a little over a decade. Um, let me just list off some of this guy's quarterbacks. And and now let me say this before I read this list. If you're just talking about Great college quarterbacks. Now, a couple of these guys had great success in the NFL, but, you know, the NFL is a whole different animal, right? So, under his tutelage, he had David and Derek Carr. He had Trent Dilfer, pretty big-time name. Joey Harrington, great college quarterback. Didn't have a great Mm -hmm. stint, but he also played for the Lions. So, you know who that was. And then uh, he had a couple other guys that probably wouldn't necessarily know but had good college careers. And then the creme of the creme is is Aaron Rodgers. He had A-Rod. So, if you want Jay Kaner, who's the returning starter coming back, probably one of the best quarterbacks in the country, in my opinion, he's with the perfect guy, perfect system, and they are going to be throwing the ball all over the yard. They were a top 10 offense passing last year in attempts and yards, so I, that's not going to go anywhere. Um, he had 4,100 4, yards last year and 33 touchdowns. I mean, that's a pretty damn good season. Okay. Um, and then he's got his top three or his top two guys coming back, and Jalen Cropper, who's a stud. And you got Josh Kelly, and then you got Nico Remigio. I think I said that right. And he's a transfer from Cal, so he's a big body guy. So they, I mean, he's got his two two number one and number two guys coming back from last year, and a nice little transfer coming in. Um, so they did lose Ronnie Rivers in the backfield last year, but they got a couple other guys that played last year that are that are coming back, and and I think they throw the ball so much they're pass heavy first. So the run game is really just a compliment and, you know, to hit some guys out of the backfield. But look out for Fresno State. I think they're just going to be really good. Um, I do like their schedule. They do play two Power 5 teams back-to-back. I believe it's Week 2 and Week 3. So Oregon State comes to Fresno, which is going to be a huge game. And I think that's a very winnable game. Yeah, 100%, especially at home. That crowd's going to be fired up. They open with Cal Poly. So, I mean, that that should be a nice little tune-up, warm-up game for them. And then, uh, and then they go to USC. They play Southern Cal at USC again. So, but as Sprouse, me and you talked a little bit earlier, USC's playing Stanford the week before. So that's always a tough game just because of the way Stanford plays. They're going to be physical. So, I mean, if they can run those first three games with two Power 5 wins, and what USC, I mean, preseason, have, have those come out yet? 
the the rankings they they're like a top usually a top 20 no. top 15 team usually well they're gonna have so much hype this year exactly Lincoln with, Riley, with Lincoln and, Riley. Uh, and the quarterback going they're they're gonna be it wouldn't shock me if they're six or seven preseason yeah i would which say which is ridiculous but, honestly yeah, yeah but yeah, it is but if fresno state can can win that game i mean look out that's going to be a huge momentum going you know going into the mountain west but look out for them i think that's going to be the top offense uh coming out of the mountain west and then this is a little bit different of a pick they had a good year last year they kind of sputtered mid-season um you know had a couple injuries and and, and just kind of got off the tracks but the Charlotte 49ers, I think they are going to have a fantastic season this year. I think Will Healy is feeling a little bit of the heat, not, you know, not in a bad way, but he's he's a driven guy. You know, we love Will Healy and he's going to have those guys ready. They got some guys coming back. They have eight returning starters on offense coming back and I think their biggest key is Chris Reynolds. He got a little dinged up midway towards the end of the season just cuz he he does run the ball a little bit. Um so he took some shots, but he had almost 2,700 yards last year. He had 26 TDs and probably one of his best qualities is he's so smart. He protects the ball. He does not turn the ball over. That's kind of been one of his, you know, one of his iconic things that he, he he's known for is he protects the ball, which is huge. You turn the ball over, you're giving extra, extra possessions to the other offense. It's one thing he does not do. And then they, they got three of their receivers coming back. Um, I think I'm going to, I hope I pronounce this right, but Grant Dubois, I think that's how you pronounce it. Victor Tucker and Elijah Spencer are all coming back. And then the running backs, they have Calvin Camp and a transfer from Iowa, Shedrick Bird. So, we, you know, we don't, you know, he's a transfer. You never know what those guys transfer from a power five, why they did it, what's their reason. But, you know, they got two guys to kind of complement each other in the backfield. And I think, I think Chris Reynolds is going to have a fantastic season and look out for those guys. They're still playing in conference USA. And like we've said before, that, that, that conference is kind of up for grabs. So I think the Charlotte 49ers and Jimmy Touchdown and those boys are going to have a great season. Hey, we saw that offense live yep. firing on all cylinders. I mean, yep. That was a high-scoring game when it they was. played MTSU. And that, hey, that, that offense was exciting to watch. Yeah. Yeah. I hope – I mean, it, I, we root for Charlotte for sure, man. I hope they're good. They deserve to be good. Coach Hills deserves to have a really good season. Um, but – that's an interesting one. That's a little bit more of a dark horse, I would say. Yeah, I'll I would, tell you. I would say so. Ahead. No, I was just gonna say I would say it's a little bit of a dark horse, but I just thought you know last year they started off so well and everyone was kind of fired up about them and they kind of sputtered mid season. You know, it just it it, it happens. But yeah. uh, I think I think Heels is gonna have he's gonna have those guys ready to go, and I think Chris Reynolds he wants to prove something. Yeah, I went I went uh, my two. I went a little more obvious. Uh, Houston Cougars, man, and they're they're in my opinion they got the best shot out of anybody in the group of five to make a Cincinnati kind of run. Clayton Tune, anytime you got a veteran quarterback and veteran receiver combo, so Clayton Tune threw thirty TDs last year, twelve of them were to Tank Dell. Both are coming back, um, and if you follow Tank Dell on social media, he he's getting he's really taking it personally. He, he feels like he's getting shafted. So every time they come out with these top receivers lists, he's not on it. And every time he's doing the little, you know, pen emoji. Just watch his film. Like, yeah, I, he's the best receiver in college football. I mean, I, yeah, I'm saying star, it. Man. He is so good. Just watch his film. Hot take dude, right there. You heard it first, Tyler Tipton. Dude, they're 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 going to be really good. And and I mean, they were good last year. Like Cincinnati was so good last year that it it sort of diminished. Um, how good Houston was. And I'm trying to get Houston's schedule pulled up real fast, but I mean, yeah, they're, so they lost their only loss was a season opener to Texas tech. And then they ran the table the rest of the way and lost to Cincinnati in the conference championship bowl or conference championship game. And then they beat Auburn in the bowl game. So, and then you return most of your core, so I'm, te- I'm telling you, Houston is going to be the real deal. Now, you know, I had to go up to the Mac for my other pick. And my boy Dustin Crum is, is long gone out of Kent State. Um, but two teams. One, I think NIU with Rocky Lombardi is going to be really good. Uh, but as far as for fireworks, I'm going Miami of Ohio with Brett Gabbert and his number one receiver, Mac. Remember the name, Mac Hippenhammer. Mac Hippenhammer. 
Just look out for that combo. When it comes to the Mac, we know every team in that conference is going seven and five this year. And seven and five is going to win the conference and seven and five is going to be last in the conference. <laughs> That's the way that conference goes. But Miami of Ohio with Brett Gabbert and Mac Hippenhammer are going to put up incredible numbers. When you're looking for a fun Tuesday night betting game to take the over, Miami of Ohio, take the over. Jesse Grisham, who you got? I got a few. Oh, son. Got a couple. But I'm, I'm only going to talk about a couple. Um, well, you already said it, Sprouse. Yeah, I, I do like Tulsa. <laughs> I, last year, they were my ultimate dark horse. <clears throat> and ironically, I was more high on them last year than I am this year because this year – they lost four outs of linemen. They lost all their receivers. <laughs> they, they're, they're replacing their running back. All they had back is the guy that I'm saying, look out for, Davis Brent. The guy threw for 3,200 yards last year, and he won six regular season games. Guys, y'all gave me hell last year, but four games they lost were by by one score. They, 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 were, they were one score away in four ball games to having – a, a, a eight to nine winning season and they won their bowl game. Their defense is what keeps them in ball games. They've always had a very strong defense in the American conference. That's going to happen again this year. If the defense comes to play and Davis Brin, remember the name Davis Brin, if he can have a stellar season, these guys are going to win more ball games. They're only picked to win six games this year, which I think is just absurd. I think they're going to win eight to nine because they're going to have a veteran quarterback behind the, uh, with uh, holding, holding the holding the uh, what do they call it, Jeff? Holding the uh, the reins, Helms reins, whatever called. Yeah, there <laughs> he's going to have a great year as long as the new old line. They bring four new guys in there. They can block for him. The guy can make plays. Davis Brin, he will make some fireworks for you in the American Conference. But he's not my go-to in the American. Surprisingly, I I didn't understand the assignment. I think I thought I was looking more at dark horses and Michael Which- Pratt. Offense will put up fireworks. Hmm. Okay. (laughs) Tulane is going to put up fireworks, my friends. Uh, Oh, my God. Did I say my friends? Lee Corso, get the hell off me. Uh, Michael (laughs) Pratt. Michael Pratt with Tulane. The guy uh, threw for 2,400 yards, 21 touchdowns last year. As a freshman, he's coming in back as a sophomore. Now, granted, it's sophomore that with, you know, uh, quotations because he was part of the 2020 season. Um, He's – they, they they lost some close games last year. I mean, let's talk about Oklahoma. They played Ole Miss tough. These guys, they have some playmakers, and they're coming back. Uh, he's going to be throwing the ball down the field to Daquan Jackson, a dangerous threat uh, deep down. And they also have Tyreek James, who's a, who's a great tight end for them, and Deuce Watts. Uh, they have some big names for them coming back on this offense. Tulane, they're going to put some points on the board. I'm not uh, – confident enough to talk about their defense. I have not done research on the defense. Their defense might be atrocious, atrocious, and they may be playing, you know, shootouts every every Saturday. But they're going to put some points on the board. Look out for Tulane, Michael Pratt, the guy can sling it. Well, I like should... that pick. Pratt had a – he – remember, he outplayed Spencer Rattler. Yeah, in he's good. Yeah. Game. I remember that. I remember that one. He's a good player. Well, they, think, should, I, they I, should start out 2-0. I mean, they, they play UMass – uh, week one, and then they play Alcorn State, which Alcorn State's a good team, but, I mean, you would think that they would beat them. But then they then they play at Kansas State, which, I mean, you never – I mean, that's a tough one. But if they get some momentum and they're playing good, like like you're saying, Grish, I mean, they could very well easily – I'm looking at their schedule. I mean, I like the, I like their schedule. I, I like the schedule. They're, they're in the American Conference, right? So, I mean, That's there's going to be some tough games, you know, in, in, the, in that conference. But, uh, I, like you just said, you get some wins behind you, you know, and you're, you're on a little win streak yeah. here. You just never know what's going to happen when you're 3-0, 4-0, 5-0. Mm-hmm. So, just Michael Pratt, uh, if he does what he did last year, they'll be fine. They'll definitely win some more games than they did last year. That's for sure. I like the pick. I like Tulane. We might have to – Take our talents to New Orleans no, if they start that's... having a good season. We'll be totally down for that. Now, I'm just keep looking at Tip's camera. We got to watch the sunset here I know. live on Group of Five Guys. I mean, is I that like I got not... a tan. you ask me if there's another podcast in the country you get that on? Doubt it. I don't think so. I don't think you get that Show on Joe me. Rogan. Right. Show I don't me. think. Yeah, <laughs> you don't get it on Howard Stern. 
<laughs> right here on the group of five guys. Well, we got like two minutes. I just want to touch on this because we had a really, really strong social media debate while there's lots of good social media debates going on over the weekend. Uh, the best one was between the group of five guys and the Bowling Green Talk Twitter account uh, because I'll speak for myself. I want playoff expansion. I think the only true fair way to do it is 16 teams, all 10 conference champions, and six at large. You'll still be able to get your two or three SEC or Big Ten teams. They'll still get in. Don't worry. You know, I know everybody's afraid that Northern Illinois would have got in over Georgia or if only the conference champs. Nope, you still put Georgia in. You can let the committee do the seats just like they do with basketball. Yep. But you can't, you can't assume – that just because, I mean, I think he made the point on Twitter that if a nine and three, if Arkansas went nine and three, that would be more impressive than Bowling Green going twelve and zero. How? There's way too many variables yeah. to say that it's just as it's just as black and white as that. And and if it is more impressive, then guess what? Put Arkansas in there as a freaking eight seed. Yep. And put Northern or Bowling Green in there as a nine seed. And let them play. And hey, maybe Arkansas wins by 30 points. Maybe, maybe not. But you cannot assume that because they say SEC on their little shoulder patch that they're automatically better than everybody else. You can't say that. They're riding. Look, Alabama, you can say that. Okay. Because for the last two decades, they've been better than everybody else and not better than the group of five teams. Everybody, including Arkansas including all these other eight, nine win yep. SEC teams that get smacked by Bama. It happens. So don't tell me that if a team's undefeated or even 11 and one, that they don't deserve to at least suit them up and play. Yeah. I mean, I was going back and forth with a couple of those guys and first and foremost, like I'm, I'm, I'm all good with being a realist, but how, how are you, how's your page bowling, whatever yeah. bowling green, and like you were like dogging Bowling Green essentially, like be, yeah, I don't get it. I, I just don't understand. Like you would want, you should want the best opportunity for your program, and if they are good enough to get into a situation where they can make a playoff, like I don't see the downside of more football. Like you're complaining about these non-conference mashups you would see at the end of the season in the playoffs, but but you're okay with it in the beginning because they're money games. It's like you could eliminate two of your non-conference. You know, and then you add them at the end of the season for the teams that make it. Or there's a variety of different ways you could set the playoff up. But to just be so dismissive and be like, they don't belong with those teams. Like, it's it's the worst mindset to have as a competitor and as a college athlete, in my opinion. It's to just automatically assume that those guys are better and I don't, I don't deserve to be on the same field. Like, no. Like, I always want to play the best. I don't care if I get smoked. At least I know where I stand and where I, how I fare against those guys in the SEC or in the ACC or wherever it is. On the pickleball court, Jesse, don't you want to play the best pickleball player of all time so you know He's on his team. you can beat him? <laughs> I, no, no, you're exactly right, though. No, you want to, you want to play the best every, every time. And, and going back to what you say, I mean, Cincinnati – they, they, they were undefeated at conference and they played Alabama and I will defend it to this day. They played Alabama just as good or better than anybody else did that whole season. So, uh, I mean, I'm not saying Bowling Green, <laughs> the last year Bowling Green team would probably got be bad. No, no, he, no, he no, was, no, I know, but 12 and 0 team, if you go 12 and 0 in group five, I mean, look at the Cincinnati. You should at least have a the, shot. The, the, look That's at the Bowling shot. Don't say that you're going to get smoked. I mean, look at Michigan and Georgia, okay? But we, we, we've been down that path. Uh, I, I would agree with you a thousand percent. What I was going to say is I'm going to I'm going to make an argument and I'm going to contradict myself. Before I would I, I was not for the the 16 team playoff for one and one, one reason only as a former player that's a lot of freaking games man that that's that's a lot of damage put on your body you're not in the NFL. But when you have a that. chance to I'm play for a national there. championship, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. <laughs> My own thing is 10 years ago if you're playing 15 games or whatever that's too much. But now. Now that I see buddies making more money than I'm making right now, yeah. I'm saying if you're getting paid to play in college football, then you can put your body through 13, 14, 15 games. I don't, even a group of five guys. I mean, you over here signing deals for so-and-so money. I would say, all right, these guys are student athletes. Well, the game's changed a little bit. You're still a student athlete. You're NIL. If they want to go to 16, 16 games, you can't say now, like, well, we got to 
take care of these kids. No, these guys are getting paid now. So now we can actually pay to watch them play, uh, you know, four or five more games. So I'm all for it. I used to not be, but now since NIL's come around, I'm all about a 16 team playoff. Well, and here's the thing too, is you, you could like tip said, you could get rid of some of your non-conference games. If every conference champion is going to get into the playoff, Yeah, you don't have to play those either that week one or the week, you know, thirteen. Really you know, like we're, we're, so we're, I'm an old school. Oh, I, I, like I love I love the, you know, different conferences yeah. playing each other. Yeah, I love I love I like when Alabama team. plays like San Diego City College at the first game of the year and just blow- that's just a great game to watch. It's fantastic. Love. Uh, I'm not even well, talking about Alabama. I'm no, about I'm just like, saying. You know, I'm, no, I'm just saying like, like those games. Like I get it's a money game for the for the small school, but like. If That's you're talking about cut, about if this. you're talking about I'm talking, cut, I'm talking about like I even agree with group of five. I'm not talking about no, like, no, no. I'm not saying you said State anything. Plays, uh, I'm not Matt saying school. Well, I'm not saying that you State said anything. Marshall in a non-conference like Penn State's down playing. Down. I mean, I mean, Texas is playing Alabama this year. Yeah, I think Tennessee's Those playing. Like, uh, who's Tennessee playing this year? They're playing. I mean, there's there's power five playing. Power five. Those games will probably have to go away if you're going to yeah. have a 16 team playoff. No, which I appreciate. You would end up seeing it in the fall. You'd end up seeing it in the playoff. Maybe. Because you would get you would get the bigger yeah. schools who probably have the higher seed, and they would end up playing the the conference champions of the group of five. So you would still have those good matchups. I was specifically talking about when you see like the Auburn or or Tennessee or some of these other like playing a one double A school where every once in a while you get an upset. But I mean, most of those games are like seventy to nothing tune up games, and like if you're gonna cut games out, cut like cut those ones. Yeah, and a, and a, and another thing too is you you also keep in mind like only two teams are going to play the extra. What is that going to? Yeah, be? exactly. So so you, you know most teams, half of them are going to be eliminated in the first round. So it's one extra game, and that's just them playing that game instead of their bowl game. So I think yeah. you would eliminate opt outs because you you would get. You know, even if – look, I'll play the SEC card here because they're probably the ones that do it the most because they're playing in the Gator Bowl instead of the playoff. But if you're 9-3 and three, Arkansas is playing in the playoff and they're playing against, you know, whoever, they're not probably not opting out. I wouldn't think so. And then, you know – and then my, my other point is this, and this was the point I was trying to make on Twitter, is like they keep saying the talent gap, the talent gap, the talent gap. And they were like Cincinnati had a record number of NFL guys – but they were just talent wise superior. It's like, hey guys, a record number of NFL guys means the talent was there. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, but but they ran into a perennial talent team like Alabama. And my point was, guess what's gonna close the gap? Guess who's guess what group of five team is recruiting better than any group of five team ever has in the history of football? Cincinnati. Why? Because they just made the playoff and they just got exposure and they just got money. And they yep. can upgrade facilities and then they can recruit and then they can win. And it just goes on and on and on. And then like to say that the talent, ca- you know what teams no power five or top 10 team ever wants to play ever Boise state, yep. Appalachian state, Cincinnati now, because they know those teams historically fare pretty damn well when they play the quote power five or the better teams. So like, just don't, it just, that's just, the assumptions that every single team, regardless of the season, is better no matter what every year. It's season by season, and especially with the transfer portal, every roster looks different every single year. So you well, can't. Sprouse, make- go, <clears throat> going back to your Cincinnati point, like imagine what the conversation would be like if we had a 16 team playoff and Cincinnati wins two games to get mm-hmm. to the final four and then they lose to Alabama. The conversation uh-huh. is, well, Cincinnati won two big games and they mm-hmm. just they just ended up playing against Alabama and, and they lost. Mm-hmm. But no, we have this conversation because they made it to the final four because there's only four teams right now and they lose to Alabama in the first round. It's, oh, they, they didn't belong there from the get-go. I mean, the conversation about these extremely talented teams, it, it completely changes with the 16-team playoff. Yeah. Let well, him, let him prove it on the field. I mean, I know, I know we're trying to move on. I got to get this out, though. Yeah. I'm with the 16 team, but we cannot afford to lose the out of conference scheduling. Because I'm not saying all of them. What the they group have of three. five has to go play these power five schools. I mean, I'm sorry, we have to right now. 
We don't have enough people hey. going to all the games. So you have to get this money from from the, the Power Five schools. If you don't, if you if you want to do a sixteen game playoff and then we lose those out of conference games, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. Yeah, the, but, uh, you, the but you'd be but you'd be getting revenue from ESPN from the playoff game, and then you're and you get then in. Well, one team would autumn would get in for sure. What about so, the other? So, well, tip, well, typically the conference gets a payout, right? Yeah, For, when your team goes to a big bowl game, the conference gets some of that money. But the, the TV deals would be so astronomical at that point, and then it would continue to close the gap. So right. then I, even if you get the blowouts, they would slowly close because you're allow, you're affording these teams the exposure and the ability to recruit against. I just don't think you have to lose those those games. If you're if you're paying these players what they're getting paid now, group of five, power five, then they can play the 15 freaking games that season, the way I see it. Yeah. I like it. But that's good stuff. I mean, and, and we, we definitely appreciate the interaction on Twitter. Um for a while there, I think who was it? Late late kick Josh got all fired up too. He's a blue check guy. So I don't, but then Danny Cannell, you see him on Twitter today, he wants the expansion because you yeah. look at it. Look at college baseball. Old Miss wasn't wasn't supposed to be <laughs> winning the thing. Hell, Tennessee was the number one team in the country, weren't they? And they yeah. lost and they lost they real were, quick. Yeah. I guess they uh, shot shot typical. their load a little early, it's flipping standard, flipping people standard off. Tennessee. And, yeah. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> it was that's that's fun stuff, man. Well, hey, we appreciate you guys watching and listening. If you like what you saw or heard, make sure you hit like and subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Make sure you follow us on. All the social media accounts, it's at Group of Five Guys, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Hit the merchandise site, get some gear, Group of Five Guys.com. Um, and then make sure you call the hotline so you can get in on some of these arguments. 615 900 4286. Hope everybody has a really good Fourth of July long weekend. We appreciate those of you that make Fourth of July possible, continue to make it possible in this country. Group of Five Guys, we are out of here.